Welcome at this lesson about the Android application structure. We will talk about APIs, how are they related to an Android app, the sandbox, how are apps separated in different sandboxes, packaging, how does a package app look like, and what are the different types of packaging, the Android manifest file, which is an important part of every Android app, and app components, what type of components that are most important or most used within Android. We will show some examples of this. And the last topic, IPC, which is inter-process communication, which is also important if you want to share data or other things between apps. So let's start with the first topic, APIs. Within the Android architecture, we already showed this picture a few times. So an Android app is the top layer of the Android architecture. And within an app, you can use APIs. And there are different types of APIs. You can use APIs from the native development kit, but then you have to write a piece of code in C or C++. And then yeah, you can, for example, interact directly with WebKit or other libraries mentioned on this picture. Or you can use the Java SDK, could also be in Kotlin. And then there are different APIs available. So for example, to create user interface components, but also to interact with the camera, with the location. So APIs are of course very important and useful to use if you're developing an app. So you don't have to create everything yourself, but it's just picking the right API for the right purpose. That's most important about APIs. Then next, the Android sandbox. As we explained earlier, Android uses a virtual machine similar to Java, but it's called the Dalvik virtual machine. And within security enhanced Linux, also each app runs in its own sandbox with its own process. So as you can see in this picture, we have two different apps running, app one and app two. And app one has a separate sandbox, separate user ID or unique ID for the process as well. And if you look into the Android system and you have, for example, access via a shell, then also each app has their own directory, which is by default only accessible for the user running the app. So the folder naming is data data com dot my example dot app, for example. And it is also possible to share data between apps, but then you have to specify this in the configuration. And then you can use a shared user ID. So that's in short how the application sandbox looks like. And next topic is the application structure or the packaging. Within Android, the most known probably package is the APK file, the Android package kit. But recently Android also wants you to use a new format called AEB, Android App Bundle. You can look up this, of course, again, in the official Android documentation. So it says from August, 2021, New apps are required to publish with Android App Bundle on Google Play. So you have to use this new format and there's also a limit on the application size. But within one app, you can also use other resources. So it still could be bigger. But for now, most important to know is that there are two different package types. If you're really going to build your app, of course, then you have to follow the, the, those manuals. Most important to know is that an application package is basically just an archive file, so a zip file you can extract. And if you extract the file, then you get different folders with different files. So as you can see in this screenshot, there is a manifest folder with the Android manifest file. There is a lib folder which can contain some libraries regarding native libraries. If you use the Mirror app, there's a root folder. And there is a DEX folder, which contains files with the DEX extension. And DEX is the binary code. If you build your application, the Java or Kotlin files are translated to binary files with a DEX format. The REST folder contains app resources. It could be XML files with some fixed constants, for example. It could be pictures, it could be all kinds of, of resources. Assets could also contain, for example, pictures. And there are some metadata directories. What we also can do is if we go to Android Studio, if you have it installed and you do file new project, then there are also a lot of different templates already available 
to create your own app. So most of them are related to the uh, Java or Kotlin apps, but also there are some native apps templates available. What we already did, I created a project for a basic activity to also show you the structure of an Android app before you build it. As you can see, Android Studio is quite similar to IntelliJ if you are familiar with Java projects and you use Gradle. So Gradle or Maven, for example, are build tools. And what you also can do within Android Studio, you can also build or install the app directly on a device. So it could be a virtual device, but it could also be a physical device as long as it's connected to Android Studio. Let's quickly look into the structure. So the structure is quite similar to the uh, packets app. You have a manifest folder with the Android manifest file. Manifest file, but we will come into this later, can contain a lot of things. But this default application contains the name of the application. It contains the version of the Android SDK, something about a team, and it contains activity within activity it is mentioned again what the name of your application is but also the main activity is mentioned here so this is the class which is used to start your application so this is very important that in the manifest it says what kind of activity is used so by default the name is the main activity and also yeah something called intense launcher and main but most important is that yeah it's Quite similar to a Java project, so you have a package and then you have a class. So for example, we have the main activity class and this class, yeah, users also those dependencies for the user interface and from the Android SDK for this default app. And it has some Kotlin methods, for example, on create options when the is an example of a method, which is by default created via this template app. So it has a main activity, it has a first fragment, and it has a second fragment, which is something related to the user interface as well. And it has a folder for the Android test, which is kind of an interface, interface test. So it does some basic uh, test already. It checks if the package name is correct. That's the Android test. And there's also by default, a unit test class created, but this one also only does a check if two plus two is four. So those tests you have to extend yourself, but at least the structure is already there within the Java packets with the name of the application you created. All the source code should be in this directory. And then we have the resources directory. The resources directory contains some hard-coded values, for example, related to colors used by your apps. And it also contains some user interface components. So within Android Studio, you can also change and create the complete user interface and then use it within your source code. So this is in short how your application looks like if you just create a new app within Android Studio. Yeah, within the Explorer, we can also verify the same structure. So the main folder is my application. And within this main folder, there are some settings files which are mainly used to build your application. So those are not really uh, relevant if you build it or you, if you package it, but you have the app folder, which contains all the app components. So the lib folder is empty in my case, because I don't use any external native libraries. And the source folder contains all source code. So similar to what we saw in Android Studio, it contains a package with a test class for the Android test, the same for the unit test, and we have the main packets, so the com.mobilehackinglab.myapplication with the Kotlin files. So that's in short how the structure of an application looks like. Let's dive a little deeper into the Android manifest file, but during the labs, you will see that there are also vulnerabilities uh, possible, or it's always good to, uh, yes, one of the first checks to look into the manifest file. But in short, the Android manifest file always has the same name, androidmanifest.xml. And it contains information about the app components, like we saw the name of the main activity and, and also about other application comp components. It gives you information and it has information about permissions. So what kind of permission does your app need? So if you're calling some external API, it probably needs the internet permission. 
maybe you also want to do something with the user location, then it could need also permission about the GPS, for example, and also flags. So you could also have feature flags or other flags, which you can define in the Android manifest file. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the app components. As we already saw in the example with Android Studio, an application has activities. So the main activity to start an app, for example, but it could also have services, broadcast receivers, and content providers. A service is something which runs in the background, but it's part of your app. Broadcast receivers is used to receive information from other apps, for example. Content providers could be, for example, a provider to interact with the database, for example, the SQLite database. And on this picture, you see an example of an activity. An activity has, for example, an onCreate method, an onStart method, an onResume method, and then you can create your own custom code what the application should do if the activity is start or if the activity is stopped. And by default, those yeah, methods are available if you have the type activity. 